Okay, a quick recording of my typical processing of an image. This is a studio portrait shot. Um, if I go up all the develop settings, this is straight from camera. Uh, I'll just do a quick crop on it. This is just to taste. No two people are likely to do it the same, but I'm obviously looking for a wee bit of symmetry here, so just hit enter on the crop. Um, I always tease people in catch light about wanging the slider. You don't want to be a wanger. Um, so instead of wanging those sliders and never knowing what you end up on, you can be more precise just by clicking on the word shadows and using the plus key. And every time you press it, you go up five at a time. So I'm just looking at the image and looking at the shadow detail and, you know, I'm just, and then on to highlights and doing the opposite, minus, minus five at a time. I'm just looking for um, a, a decent overall exposure. Uh, in the days of negatives, you always maybe looked for a flat negative and then you introduce the contrast later. Uh, this is the very, digital editing is no different. You're, you're looking for a fairly flat um, starting point from your raw file. Uh, so I'm bringing the shadows right up to 60 there. Color temperature, same again, rather than wanging the slider. Just plus goes up 50 at a time and that's a matter of, of taste. I'd probably end up about 4.6 on that. Um, <clears throat> sharpening in Lightroom, uh, be aware that by default, if I just change this back to um, the sharpening, well, I, I have made changes in here, but by default, sharpening in uh, Lightroom has a radius. Um, I'm not sure what it is. It could be a um, couple of pixels or something, but uh, the lowest you can bring it down to is 0 0.5. I advocate 0 0.6 um, and uh, quite, you know, the full amount, 150. This is pre-sharpening, essentially, um, and detail I have off. Um, if you click on the image, you can zoom in and uh, you can see there that it's just nicely sharpened. Um, <clears throat> if you alt, hold the alt key and click on the mask, there you can see I've put it up to about 50% masking. So any areas that are in, uh, in white will be sharpened, areas in black will not be sharpened. So the, you don't want the skin to be um, over sharpened, but you do want the beard to be sharpened. So those are my default settings for that I've put into Lightroom um, for sharpening. You do that by holding the Alt key and clicking on Reset Sharpening and then down here Set as Default um, and that will apply to all RAW files taken with your Canon camera. Um, if it was a different camera and you wanted different settings, Lightroom will recognize the type of RAW file it is and, and change to whatever your sharpening preferred sharpening settings are. Um, so, uh, in terms of uh, any other corrections, um, you can add a vignette, just click on the word amount and just use the minus key. We're not seeing an awful lot happening there with that. Um, so that's minus 50. Um, you can turn that off and on just to see the effect of it. So yeah, it's a fairly subtle uh, vignette there. And uh, I'd probably be happy enough now to send that into uh, into Lightroom, into Photoshop. So photo, edit in Photoshop. And we're going to make this a black and white image, so I'll be able to demonstrate my technique for um, black and white conversion. So let's have a look at the, um, we're at 100% up here. You can get there by double clicking on the uh, magnifying glass or just simply hitting command one. But um, I like the, uh, um, the magnifying glass. I just double click on it and I'm in at 100%. Um, there's good detail in the eyes there. I mean, there are so many ways to do this. I'm going to do this a fairly quick and easy way. So we'll just go Command J for a new layer. 
PC users will uh, be um, control J for a new layer and I'll just go image adjustments brightness and contrast and I'll type in um, plus 30 and uh, plus 10 that has been applied to the whole image and then it's um, alt and mask to give me a black mask to uh, black that out and then it's B for brush and X to make white my foreground colour not to paint at a hundred percent and um, hardness of the brush uh, probably about 25 percent is fine but fill the eye fill the screen with the eye so I, I'm right in here at what uh, 400 percent And this just allows me to uh, to paint with that wee bit of uh, control. And if you want to hit the Alt key and click on the mask, that will show you uh, the areas that you've missed. Uh, there's something on with my smoothing here or settings. Um, stroke catch up, possibly. Let's see if that. Um, I don't know. There's something funny uh, with the way my uh, brush is working, it's like a delayed action. So alt uh, click on the mask again and you're back to the image under the other eye. So Command-0 fits the image to screen if you don't know what I did there. And then you, uh, so I'm going to Command plus plus just to zoom in that wee bit more. So at the moment this is too much. Um, so I just go, rather than wanging this opacity slider, if you just go V for Victor, that's the same as pressing the Move tool. So V for Victor and press 4 and you're automatically at 40%. And uh, less is more. So... Um, Always error on the uh, on the low side. Any small little uh, blemishes, you know, the tiny little hair there, just the likes of the uh, the spot healing brush. Just make it as small as your blemish and just get rid of it. Connor has uh, pretty good skin there, so there's very little required in terms of blemishes. Okay, so um, there's not a whole lot to be doing. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's uh, really it's ready to be converted to black and white. So a new technique that I've developed here is to do a duplicate layer, turn the top layer off, <clears throat> click on the bottom layer, and then go into Filter, Nick Software, Silver FX Pro. And just click on what I call the base neutral conversion. It does what it says on the tin. It's a neutral black and white conversion. And very often this is, you know, it's a very good black and white conversion. But you then use the top layer to look for something maybe a wee bit more dramatic. And you can then blend the two of them to get a what it would be a unique black and white conversion. <coughs> just be aware that some of these uh, presets are a wee bit gimmicky. Some of them introduce um, borders or grain, and you can't blend one image with that, that is grainy with another image that is not. 
Um, there are some that I use quite frequently. For instance, the Fine Art Process is quite a good uh, black and white conversion, um, as is Wet Rocks. But you can see how different they are in terms of the final um, product. Soft sepia is quite good, um, but the soft sepia does include film grain. So I just come down to where the grain is and just get rid of it. So there's the grain off. Um, structure is down minus 35 by default. And I just bring that back so we get more structure coming back into the image. Uh, contrast is at my, and it's called soft sepia, so they're going for a soft look. Uh, I like it overall, but I think it's just again, just needs to be reined back in again. <clears throat> so in some ways, uh, sometimes the filters go positive too far, these have gone negative too far, so I'm just bringing these back um, so that they're not um, uh, as, as severe. Might just brighten the mid-tone slightly on that. But this is all to taste. No two people would end up with the, uh, the with the exact same. So I'm just going to click OK on that. And what you now will have is your your safety net below, which is your base black and white conversion, and something with maybe a wee bit more drama to it uh, on top. And you basically turn it off and on and decide which do you like best. And if you like the top one best, you're going to go with a fairly high opacity, like 7 for 70%. Um, so this is 70% the top layer and 30% the bottom, or if you want to go 5, it's a 50% blend of the two. I'm probably going to end up on about 70% on that, but that's, I say, a matter of personal taste. Once I'm happy with it, I'll flatten image. Um, the effect of... of um, of, of that black and white processing is that I think I've lost some of the drama in the eyes, so I might just revisit that. Command J. Um, we'll try one filter next software, and it's called Tonal Contrast. I use this fairly frequently. So click on Tonal Contrast. And by default, um, it increases saturation by 20%. Although this is black and white, it probably has little or no effect on a black and white image. But I'm just, I normally, I just by um, habit reduce that to naught. Um, the rest of them, if you hit the compare button, you'll see the, the before and after. So it is uh, adding a wee bit of drama to the highlights. It's like one click dodging and burning really, but be aware uh, it will introduce halos, so where there were no halos before, there can be halos afterwards, so you just have to look out for that and uh, um, get rid of it. So how do we get rid of it? This is being applied to the whole image. So if I then go Alt and Mask, it's all blacked out, and then I can go B3 um, and paint in that tonal contrast at 30% opacity uh, because it's not something that I maybe want over the entire image. If this was for the manufacturer of the suit you might want to draw a wee bit more attention to the suit but I want it to be all about Connor's face. So I'm just rubbing in basically um, that tonal contrast into his face and I can now turn that off and on and you can see as I say, it's like a one-click dodging and burning technique. You know, if there's a lazy man's way to do something, I will always find it and always use it. So that, that looks pretty good, I have to say. I mean, your mask can look quite mad. There's the mask. Now, I've used, um, I haven't used the softest brush. I've used a 25% soft brush. So if I just use a square bracket key to bring that down, um, I can... Uh, just give that softer edge and alt click on the mask again turn it off and on and i'm looking for halos i'm looking for any areas that uh, problems have been introduced and i don't see any so i'm happy with that and i just flatten image um, two things to do now command j one is to do dark and light and center so nick software color fx pro And 
darker than light in center does what it says on the tin. So I'm going to bring the brightness down to plus 20 rather than plus 25. The border luminosity is at minus 50. I'm going to rein that in as well. Minus 30 maybe. And the center size, I always go 20 or smaller. So we'll go for 16. And it's then place center. So I click on that. And I, I don't place the center in the center of his face because if you look at his face, the left side, as you look, is the lit side, and this is the shadow side. So I'm going to place this just uh, on the uh, on the eye, or close to the eye, on the lit side, and click OK. And if I turn that off and on, you can see the effect. You're now draw. You're using brightness values to bring you into the eye, um, and. On the basis that less is more, if you take a third off, if I go V67, I've taken off 33%, a third, and less is more, it's still doing the exact same job. So, flatten image. And the last thing to do would be to sharpen. Um, this is a raw file, or started off as a raw file. It has had pre sharpening applied in Lightroom, as I showed you. Um, but for print, um, I use Nick software. Output sharpening. So if I'm printing this image, I want to sharpen it for print, and um, I've, these are the defaults that I use for. So it's sharpening for inkjet rather than display, viewing distance auto, paper type luster, and it's the printer resolution is the key. I tell it that it's 2400 by 2400. It doesn't matter what resolution your printer is, by the way. This is just to get the best sharpening. Um, so just click on 2400 by 2400. All these other buttons, just ignore them and just click OK. I'll just zoom in there on these. So it's perfect sharpening, absolutely perfect sharpening. Click OK. And uh, you'll never see sharpening unless you go to 100%. Uh, so either double click on the magnifying tool or press Command 1 and you will come into 100%. I mean, that is just absolutely perfect sharpening. Um, yeah, you'll not get better than that. So um, happy with that, and I would just then flatten the image and save that as a as a print file. Um, so hopefully that gives you a new way to produce black and whites, unique black and whites. Um, if you have any questions, just email me um, ross dot mckelvey at yahoo dot co dot uk. Uh, or send me a PM and I will do my damnedest to, uh, to help you. Thank you.